Gratitude, the parent of all other virtues. Adam Smith described gratitude as the sentiment prompting benevolent behavior. But where does gratitude begin? It begins as we get into our own story. As we take the time to look around at the goodnesses that we take for granted, the beauty of the ordinary that we miss, the gifts that we assume to be ours. Generosity we describe as both a virtue and a practice. Christian Smith, University of Notre Dame, describes generosity as the virtue of giving good things to others freely and abundantly. He describes it as a learned character trait, as a basic orientation to life. And he says it doesn't involve just money, it involves possessions, time, attention, aid, encouragement. And in a book that he has authored that will be released in the fall of this year from Oxford Press, he makes this statement, it is now a social fact. A social study fact. Generosity makes for human well-being. So, what's the mission of the Lake Institute? And how do we uniquely contribute to the work of the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy? I hope that you see as we nurture thoughtful giving, we are also focusing on the ways in which faith can inspire and inform more generous giving. And I want to say to you that what we do, we could never do on our own. Our greatest gift is that we are part of the Lilly Family <coughs> School of Philanthropy. We rely on our research to provide us with data so that we can call attention to the challenges that faith-based organizations are facing. Programmatically, we partner, for example, with the fundraising school, and we often utilize their principles uh, to simply underscore why best practices are so important. And we also use in all of our seminars materials from the Women's Philanthropy Institute because, oddly enough, many religious groups tend to still be male-dominated. And they need to understand the importance that women play as leaders, but also as significant donors. And it's my observation that when we work together, when we break out of our respective silos, when we harness our collective skills, something magical happens. That's what I think. The Lilly Family School of Philanthropy begins to realize its extraordinary promise and potential. So, I simply want to say thank you to all of you, my colleagues. Special thanks to Jean Temple for your visionary leadership and for your friendship and very, very wise counsel. Special thanks to Patrick Rooney, who can't be here, Marilyn Coon, Jennifer Hossel, but also Tim Fisher, because all of you help us in such grace-giving ways navigate the complexities of a university system. And most of all, I want to say this morning thank you to Amy Larimore and Karen Stone and Richard Clark, my colleagues who for the last few years have blessed me with their care, their camaraderie, and their amazing competence. It's the uh, Hoosier folk singer poet, Carrie Newcomer, who uh, captures my sense of gratitude as she writes. Every night before I go to sleep, I say out loud three things that I am grateful for. All the significant, insignificant, extraordinary, ordinary stuff of my life. It's a small practice and humble. And yet I find I sleep better holding what lightens and softens my life ever so briefly at the end of the day. And after three things, more often than not, well, I get on a roll and I just keep on going. I keep naming and listening until I lie grinning, blankets up to my chin, awash with I, I hope, I guess the last lecture has that tone to it, I hope that you remember me as a person who is in awe and love with life. It's the Jewish philosopher Abraham Joshua Heschel who said that as a child, 
He was trained to live a life that was compatible with the mystery and the marvel of human existence. Isn't that a wonderful phrase? The mystery and the marvel of human existence. Think about that. What it says to me is that uh, we humans are not machines. We sail the seas, we orbit space, we dunk basketballs and hit home runs, we experience love and caress words into poetry, we ingeniously take boring research and numbers and translate them into transformative insights, we pick up our iPhones and don't make money to causes that touch our hearts. We leave our comfort zones to go places where we've never been, to pull people we've never seen from rubbles we cannot begin to explain. In other words, each in our own way we sacrifice to make caring something we do is in our own ways we chase faithfulness. Which leads me to simply say we humans our works of art. And whenever and wherever the ordinary loses its triteness, and I see, if only for a moment, the face of God and things mundane, well, I'd have to say a kind of holy awe shivers my soul. And I'm reminded, wow, I'm part of something bigger than myself. So I say, thank you. Welcome, I guess, questions. No questions. <laughs> Silence. Okay. Yeah. This might be. Um kind of an outsider's question, but what exactly will you be doing as a senior fellow? Well, a senior fellow, I really have two, uh, two assignments. One is to work with our new executive uh, certificate program that's still in its pilot phase. And the other is to simply be of service to uh, David King and uh, help him make connections with uh, our strategic partners and whatever he asks me to do. Thank you all. Everybody's going to pause for a Thank you very much. Thank you.